All right, now what I want to do is go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 9. This won't take long. Last week I talked about Bereshit and, and I showed the prophecy of Bereshit. Now we're going to Daniel chapter 9, and I just want to read the scripture over in verse 25. <clears throat> it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth this commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time. Verse 26. And after the three score and two weeks shall Messiah, Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. This is what has been called Daniel's 70 weeks. We know that the, the decree to rebuild Jerusalem by Artaxerxes was made in 457 BC. When you count 69 weeks, you come up to the day of the crucifixion. But then you have one more week. And this week has been separated out from all the uh, from all the other weeks. So you have one week that is separated from everything else. So why did this one week get separated? We are told, we are told that that the uh, that the weeks are separated because because the, 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 the God stopped the clock. And we have the church, what's called, supposedly called the church age. And then we have, then we're going to have the clock start again at the end of the seven years. That's not going to happen. There's no scripture. There's no uh, way of making numbers work. No, no way of making the letters work. Nothing that even remotely even hints at stopping the clock. The clock didn't stop. So what did God do? Now so we're going to get into that. Let's get, let's just go on a little bit. I want you to turn over to uh, Le Leviticus chapter twenty six. Leviticus chapter twenty six, and we have a prophecy here in the book of Leviticus. I bet you didn't think of Leviticus was a prophetic book, did you? But here in Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 8, starting, we're going to look at verse 18, and then we're going to do some skipping around. But verse 18 says this, And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So go down to verse 21. And if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. Then in verse 24, Then will I also walk... If, Will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins? And then again in verse 28, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, I even I will chastise you seven times for your sin. So we have this term that's repeated over and over again seven times, seven times, seven times. So let's do let's do something now. The uh, let's go over to Daniel twelve verse seven. Daniel twelve verse seven says, "And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand in the heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half." And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Turn over to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12, 14. It says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, and times and half a time from the face of the servant. So we have a and we have the Dan, prophet of Daniel and the prophet John both speaking of time, times, and a half a time. So what is a time? What is time, times, and a half a time? 
In prophetic circles, it has been accepted in, unanimously. I don't know if anybody even questions this, but a time is one year. Times is two years. And a half a time is, is six months or a half a year. So literally you're talking about three and a half years. All right? But I want to show you something here. That's only, hold on. That's only two and a half. Or do you time two? No. Okay, so you got one plus two plus a half. Time is one. Times is two. So you, the two. first one's a one. Time, time is a one. one. Times yes. is two. So that makes three. 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 And then a half. Three and a half. Yeah, just you, you add them up. Time, times, and it's half a time. And in Revelation, it actually says 1260. Right. It says I know it's three and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it actually, it actually even, even uh, does the math for you. So. All right. Okay, so a time then is one year. A time is one year. So here he says, because you are dis because you're disobedient, because you because I'm angry at you, because you you have not believed believe me, because you are walking in disobedience, then I'm going to do something to you seven times. In other words, seven years. So we have a prophecy here that God says, I I will I will I will put seven years on you. Interesting. In, Deut in Numbers 14, 4, we won't go there, but Numbers 14, 4, and Ezekiel 4, 6, it talks about a day for a year. That there was a, that, there, that uh, every day becomes a year. We have that with the, with the spies, the 12 spies, and the Israelites. For every day that they spied out the land, they had to, they had to wander in the wilderness a year for every day. And uh, Ezekiel 4, 6 also has the same principle. There are, there are, I know in our, in our uh, sun, sun uh, uh, calendar, uh, we have 360, uh, 364 and a half or whatever it is, three, whatever it is. 65 and a quarter. 63, 65 and a quarter. But in God's, God's time, the month is 30 days. 30, 30 is the number of completion of a cycle. And over and over in Scripture, 30 is the completion of a cycle. Over and over and over, it's that way. Many, many times. And so this third, the, the, the 30 is, is God's, God's, uh, God's, God's uh, 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 month is 30 days. So that means that in 12 months is 360 days in one year. So if I take seven years times 360, I have right, so I got seven years and 360 days per year. Seven times 360 comes to 2,520. Mm -hmm. 2,520. So let's look at some perfect numbers because these numbers just just all, all over this 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 uh this whole thing that I'm talking about. The number three. The number three is the number of perfect perfection. These are these are God's perfect numbers. The number seven is the, is the number of perfect completion. The number ten is the number for ordinal perfection, and the number twelve is the number for governmental perfection. When you take those numbers, three times seven times ten times twelve, it comes to two hundred two thousand five hundred. And if you take the numbers one through nine, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm getting to that. Stop. Twenty by twenty is the only number that can be divided by every number from one through nine and have and not have a remainder. It's the only number that you can do that with. That really tells you that that is an unusual number. That that's a God number. <clears throat> so Daniel, 70 weeks, you had 69 weeks. <clears throat> and what was the end of the 69th week? Can you tell me? The cross. The cross was the end of the 69th week. Messiah was cut off in the 69th week. 
that left seven more weeks. Or seven, I'm sorry, one, one more week, right? One more week, seven days, one more week. It left one more week. I knew I said it wrong as soon as I said it. So the question now is, why is the 70th week not consecutive with the 69 weeks? Why doesn't it just keep on going? Why, did, why didn't you have another seven weeks here, years, seven weeks of years after the cross, and then that, that would be that would be the end of it? Why, why is it not consecutive? The answer is unbelief. It's the same answer as the sin of the spies. So what happened to the sin of the spies? They went out and spied the land. They came back with an evil report. They, they, Caleb, Caleb and Joshua stood up, and also Moses, because Moses, you know, was, was, was standing behind her. <laughs> but Caleb and Joshua said, we're, we're well able to take over the land. They were two spies that had a good report, two out yet. And the people wanted to stone them. And literally to stone Moses too. That's how serious it got. They weren't interested in just getting Moses to, to go on a vacation. No, they wanted him dead. Remind you of anything maybe going on today? They they want to silence, they wanted to silence Moses and Aaron and and, and Joshua to such an extent that they could not interfere anymore. Because they were bent on doing what they wanted to do. They were in disobedience. And because of that, God almost destroyed the whole nation. It wasn't for Moses. But then God does something. He adds, he multiplies time and adds it to them. He said, all right. You walk through, you, you spied the land for 40 days. We're going to do a day for a year, and I'm going to multiply time. Instead of instead of the 40 days that you could have just walked into the promised land and had it, I'm going to make that 40 days 40 years. I'm multiplying time and I'm adding it to you. Now you're going to spend 40 more years in the wilderness. This could have been your last day in the wilderness, but no, you didn't want the last day in the wilderness. You, you, wanted, you wanted to die in the wilderness. And so as you said, that's what we're going to do. Your carcasses will die in the wilderness. So the seventh, the seventh year there that's still left, that seventh week, rather, that comes up to 2,520 days. But in, but in the Bible, a day with the Lord is just a thousand years. So this day becomes years. A day for a, a day for a year. So you have two thousand five hundred and twenty years that because of now what kind of unbelief, unbelief did they get into? Because on the 69th week they came before Pilate and they said, Crucify him, crucify him. He said, I find no fault in this man. They said, Let, let his blood be upon us and our children. And God heard what they said. And he said, because of what you said, just like the, what the spies said back there, what, what came of King God, what, what you said is going to come upon you. And he, he then said, I'm going to, I'm going to, now I'm going to take and expand that seven year period of time to 2,520 years. Now, if you had 2,520 years to cross you, honey, you're going to get way, way up, right? Because there's a principle here that we, that we got to understand. When they wandered through the wilderness, how many years did they wander in the wilderness? They actually wandered a total of 40. But up to this point, it already taken two years. So God allowed them time served. Yeah. You understand what time served is, right? Absolutely. The same thing happens at the cross. 
God didn't just start time right here and over again. He went all the way back to 457 B.C. when the when the prophecy of Daniel was first met and the 60 the 70 week old pro, pro program started. And he, he put the he put the 2,520 years beginning right here because all this was time served. Now, if you take 2,520 years and add it to 457 BC, you get the year 2,028. The end of the 70th week, 2,028. What happens at the end of the 70th week? The second coming. The second coming of Christ, where I, every eye shall see him. So sometime in 2028, I don't know what, what month, I know the season. I know in 2028, he's coming. We just had last week, I just showed you 2028 through the through bear sheet. Now I'm showing you 2028 through 2520. So we have two witnesses that bring the same date and the same time period. Now that means that there's going to be a rapture of the church sometime before Yeshua comes because we know that when he comes, he's going to come riding a white horse with, with, with uh, the king of kings and lord of lords falling down upon his thigh, just like Ezekiel falls down upon your thighs, and it's going to be written there on his thigh, and he's going to be riding that horse as this as he's coming coming down, and it says that he's coming with his saints. Guess who that is? It's you and I. So sometime prior to that, we're going to be raptured. Maybe it was three and a half years before that. Maybe it's seven years before that. It could be as early as 2021, this year, or it could be in uh, just another three or four years. Three and a half years, probably. But he's coming. This time, they refused the lamb. But they won't refuse the lion. That's right. <laughs> so he's coming very soon. One of the songs we sang was to declare revival and to say it as if it's true. Can we declare revival? And to speak it as if it is already here. I'm tired of hearing revivals coming. I'm tired of hearing that. Because as long as we keep saying it, it we always are keeping it in the future. And revival will never be here because we are always looking for it to come. We're always pushing it off into the future. By our own words, by the words of our mouth, we're pushing revival further down the road. But we need to start be beginning to accept revival right now. Even though you don't see it and you don't feel it, doesn't make any difference. We're in revival. Thank God for revival. Thank God today is the day of revival. This is the day of revival. This is a time when we call out our, our loved ones, the people that we know, our friends, the people that we are acquainted with, because the time is short. And it's time to get on our knees and get serious and literally call them into the kingdom. And as if they are already in the kingdom. And, and don't look at them like lost souls. Look at them as saints of God. Look past everything and just say to yourself, I see a saint. I see some, I see my children, well, I see right now my children obeying the Lord. I see my uh, children coming into the fellowship. I see my children, children doing what they ought to be doing. I see my children do it. I see my children saved and, and baptized with the Holy Spirit and filled with, with, filled with this goodness and mercy and loving people. That's what I see. And when you start looking at your children and your grandchildren and your friends in that kind of matter, then what will happen, something will start to happen because what you're experiencing is you're calling forth that which is not as though it were. 
If we want to see our people uh, get saved, quit praying that someday they will. Quit asking God to do something. Start, start accepting their salvation for them right now and then treat them as if they're saved. You know, for years we've been, we've been taught how to how to use our faith to to get to get things. It's about time we lose, used our faith to, to, to win souls. Yeah. I don't want to hear about how you believe God for a car, or you believe God for a, for an airplane, or you believe God for for a house, or you believe God for this. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear whether you believe. Do you believe God for a soul? And they came, and, and then, then then it manifested in, in your in your very eyes very shortly after you believed it. But the but the faith that you used to when to get the house and the faith that you used to get the car is the same faith that you used to get to get people saved. You just don't accept anything else. My wife believed this belief with this house when I didn't believe for it, believe in it. She saw it was hers. The same faith that she exercised for that will win every one of her children. If she'll just get a hold of it, it'll do it for you. <coughs> you start looking at your boys, don't look at what they're doing wrong. Look at them and say, I see a good boy in there. He's, he's kind of covered up with, with a bunch of gobbledygook right now. But I'll tell you what. I see a safe man inside of there that's, that's serving God. And, and he's winning souls like crazy. When you start looking at your children, your grandchildren like that, it has an effect upon them. It really pulls on them. I'll never forget one day my son was just really, really disobedient and, and everything. And I could, I tried everything to get him corrected one day. And finally I get down on my knees and I got down and said, Joshua, look at me in the eye. Where's Joshua? Is it because you're not Joshua because my son doesn't act this way? <clears throat> I said, Can I get Joshua back? And look at you straight in the eye. And he looks at me. He calms down, he looks at me, and he goes, I'm back, Daddy. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Because I look past the admission, the, the, all the garbage he come to that was torn at me that I couldn't even get past. I couldn't get him to, get him to submit to me for nothing. But when I looked in his eyes, and I pulled that boy, that good boy, that boy that both loves his daddy, and does what his daddy wants him to do. When I pulled that out of him, he responded and he came back. That kind of power is amazing. That's the power of faith. Seeing things as that are not, that aren't looking anywhere like it, but seeing it as if they are. I want you to stand. We're going to pray for our children. <laughs> I'm going to pray a prayer, and I just want you to accept it for every one of your children, for your loved ones, whoever, whoever your friends. Father, you love us so much. You saw good in me when I didn't see any good in myself. And you spoke my name. And I responded. Now, Lord, right here and now, I am speaking right now over every child and grandchild, and every stepchild and every step-grandchild. I'm speaking over their lives right now. And I say right now, be ye saved. Be ye saved. Come, come, come. I receive right now for you on your behalf. I intercede on your behalf. And I receive it for you when you don't have sense enough to receive it for yourself. But I'm speaking right now for salvation that is coming into your life at this very moment. In the name of Jesus, I call you the saved of God. 
I call you right now. The saints that you were in, that you were meant to be. And I speak to you right now. And I command right now for your, your spirit to respond. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. 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 Yivarabika Yahweh Yishmaraka. Yair Yahweh Benada Leka Viet Kanaka. Yisai Yahweh Benada Leka Viet Kanaka. The Lord will bless you and he will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and he'll be gracious to you. The Lord will lift his countenance upon you and he will give you peace. Amen.